Welcome back to Just Scrap Radio on BJPen.com. I'm your host, Cole Sheldon, and episode 37 had a UFC 262. We got a really stacked lineup for you all in front of as the promotion hands out a new vacant lightweight title in front of a sold out crowd in Houston, Texas. But we're first joined up by one half of the co main event, Benil Dariush, to preview his fight against Tony Ferguson. This is a massive fight for Benil. He's been calling for a top ranked guy for quite some time. Actors went over Diego for hair in February. He gets his wish in Tony Ferguson. So we talk how this all came together, whether or not he surprised Ferguson took this fight as he's on a two fight losing streak. He, he could be an endured eye and how he sees his fight playing out. He knows Ferguson has a lot of crazy antics, a lot of crazy moves that he's just going to try to out crazy him is something he's been saying throughout this whole t- uh, time in the fight week. So Darius seems like he's ready and ready to get a win over Ferguson and get a, either a title shot with a win or a top ranked guy like a Gaethje or Poirier Con or someone like that if he gets a win, which would be his biggest win of his career. We're then joined by Edmund Shabazi to preview his uh, main card scrap against Jack Hermanson. Edmund's obviously coming off that his first career loss to Derek Brunson in August. We talk about that, um, the layoff, the loss, what he learned is, and he's and whether or not he was surprised that he's getting a guy higher ranked than Hermanson, a lot of people thought he was going to get this unranked guy, kind of build himself back up. But UFC's throwing him right to the walls, and Jack Hermanson, who's a perennial contender, a dangerous guy for anyone. We saw what he did to Kelvin Gaston, submitted him in uh, just over a minute. But really good stuff from Edwin, as always. We're then joined by Edson Barboza to preview his main card fight against Shane Burgos. This has violence written all over it. Uh, I was talking to Edson. He thinks this is a bonus worthy fight, like no matter who wins, no matter how it goes. Like, these two just throw down. They'll take a shot to give a shot. Both have a really good knockout power. But uh, th- this is one that I, it opened up the main card. Like this was perfect kind of placement for uh, the UFC to really get fans excited for the pay-per-view having this fight first off. But uh, I also talked to Edson about his new contract. Obviously, he was very displeased. He was on the last fight of his deal. He said if he didn't get what he wanted, he wanted to be a release and go elsewhere. So he said he got what he wanted. He likes where he's at. And we also talked about maybe a future back at lightweight after this. But he's really comfortable with featherweight, and he thinks this is where he should have been for a while. And we close things out talking to Jack Hermanson to preview his fight against Shabazz. And obviously, Jack's last fight didn't go his way against Barton Vittori. We kind of talk about that, all the circumstances going from Till to Hall and to Vittori and how it kind of all threw him off and and him needing the time off after that loss and how he's ready to really return and and how he's kind of surprised that Shabazzi is his opponent. This is a guy that the UFC offered and he said yes and he wasn't really sure if the other side would say yes, but Jack's ready. He thinks the whole game plan is pretty simple. Take this guy down to the ground. He's either going to TKO him or submit him. But So he was very honest with what his plan is, but really good show. Hope you all enjoyed. Be sure to share the show, subscribe, and thank you all for listening. All right, we're joined once again by Benil Darius, who's got a massive fight coming up here. Benil, how's it going? Ah, oh, man, uh, it's going great. Just been training really hard and really excited for this fight. Uh, I actually remember I was looking back the first time I talked to you was after the Tiago Moises win, which is what the November of 2018. Like, it's kind of crazy how far your career has gone from then. Like, obviously. That was your first win back after that stretch, and now you could be a top five lightweight two years later, like or two and a half years later. Like, what's that like for you? Yeah, man. You know, I um, I always thought I was capable of this, and once I started, once things kind of went south for me, yeah, it, uh, it was very, uh, very difficult. It, it it really like destroys your confidence. I remember being so nervous for that fight just the Thiago Moises fight I, I I was like this is do or die this might be uh this just might be my last fight just just in general I can't I can't keep going like this anyways uh thank god it went well and every fight I got a little bit more confident now now we're here obviously you get that big win over Diego Ferreira last time like did you kind of expect a big name would be coming up next no, I did not. Uh, just because, you know, I, w- I was expecting a big name after um, after uh, a close, after being Jakar close, and then after, uh, after uh, you know, just every time I won a fight, I just thought I was going to get a, b- a big fight, and it didn't happen, and then Scott Holtzman, nothing. So I, I, I was kind of shocked, but very happy. Well, obviously, Tony Ferguson, UFC 262, like, when you got that name, like, is it just an immediate yes? Yeah, I, I man, yeah, at that point, you didn't even have to call me and tell me the name, just say yes. Like, I, I told Ali, like, if any of these guys say yes, just 
just, you know, just sign the contract. Don't even call me. Are, are you surprised that this is the fight? Because I actually, like, didn't even know who they'd give Tony just because he's on that two-fight losing streak. Like, I was having a hard time thinking of whom, like, I don't know if they wanted to use him to build someone up or get him a rebound win. Like, it's just so hard to know, understand what that guy's going with. So that's that's what I was thinking. Like, man, no one's no one's gonna want to actually uh, no one's gonna actually want to fight me, you know, just just because of the way things are going. Uh, and, and I just figure Tony's coming off two losses. He's not gonna risk it. Chandler's coming off. He's ahead of me, so he's definitely not gonna want it. And Charles has been he's been just running away for a while now. So I, I was shocked. And then obviously Ferguson gets it, like. How do you prepare for him? Because he has a lot of this weird kind of movement, like the throwing the sand thing when he was fighting Gage and all that kind of stuff. Um, man, at this point, I just figure train as hard as I can, be as prepared as possible, and just match his craziness. He's just gonna he's gonna be a little wild out there, and just don't be intimidated by it by it, and just make sure you kind of match it. And that's and what do you kind of make of the Tony Ferguson right now? Cause there's a lot of people thinking he's done and like he's past his prime now, but you look, we lost to Justin Gagey, Charles Oliveira, two of the best. Then there's other people that are just, he lost to two of the best and he's still one of the best. Like where do you kind of fit in on that? Where he is? I, I don't even try to uh, figure it out. I just try to think to myself, I want to prepare for the best Tony. So I, I, I try to watch the fights where he, he was at his best and uh, uh where he was the most dangerous and and that's kind of what i've been doing i've been trying to focus for that tony and i i and uh it's 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 intimidating he he's uh one of the best lightweights of all time for sure how much do you look at the Oliveira fight just because Oliveira was really able to control him with the grappling so which obviously you have equally probably as good as grappling as he does I, I I've watched it maybe once or twice, just because you know Oliveira has uh, a lot of good chokes, and uh, as far as guillotines and darces, I'm not really a I'm not really a guillotine or darce guy. I can do them, but I I, I don't do them often. And I think uh, I I don't know I I don't fight like him. I I really don't. I have I, I have a different style, so I, I it's not something. I'm I'm trying to implement. I I recognize that Tony's uh wrestling. There, there's a possibility for a takedown for sure, but that doesn't make uh, any difference for me. I try to take down in any fight. Like that's oh, do you try to take you down? Oh, no one knew that. No one expected that kind of thing. You know, of course I'm gonna try to take you down. Do you think that your kind of how people view as a fighter has changed though? Because coming into the UFC it was. Oh, Darius is only looking to get you down to the ground, but you've been showing off that stand up and that knockout power lately. Yeah, you know, I have a great coach in Rafael Cordero as far as striking goes, and and martial arts in general. And just over time, it's it's developed. So I work so hard at everything I do, and if I can't get you to the ground like I would like, guess what? It's it's not it's not it's not a free fight for you. And uh, and it's, that's been showing lately. I I think my uh, power is improving. My timing is getting better, and I'm just a little bit more wild than I used to be. I think I was a little bit more reserved in striking before. How do you see this fight playing out? Because Tony's one of those guys that he is super durable, tough to finish on the ground, tough to finish on the feet. But you've been showing off that knockout, and you have really good jujitsu where you might be able to catch him in something. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting, but you know that's the game plan. I know you're not supposed to tell people your game plan, but it's 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 to step in there and look for a finish from minute one to minute fifteen, and and that's the game plan. So I don't know how the finish is gonna come, but it's either gonna be a spe spectacular fifteen minutes or there's gonna be a finish. And shoot, it it could it, the finish could go either way. When you fight a guy like Tony, is it like he gets hurt quite often, but he knows how to fight when he's hurt? So is that something that you can't like? If you get him hurt, you can't rush after it. Uh, you know, I helped Justin prepare for Tony, and that's what Justin said. And I remember back then thinking, man, I don't know if I can do that. That's that's really that's really hard. I'm uh, that's not really my 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 style. So I'm still thinking the same thing. I, I'm maybe I'll try, but I, I have a feeling I'm it's going to be very difficult for me to uh, if I smell blood, I'm 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 going to go for the kill.
Do you kind of think all the pressure is on Tony in this fight? Just because he's on that two fight losing streak, they're cutting a lot of uh, people, and it's been speculated like maybe he lose three in a row, maybe the UFC gets rid of him. Yeah, I don't know, man, because he's not losing to your your average fighters, you know. And yeah, uh, okay, uh, Justin finished him, but it, it's not like he's getting finished too. So I I, I really don't know. I I think. Uh, I think he's fine to be honest with you uh, but but as far as pressure goes I would I would assume he's he's feeling pressure every every fighter feels the pressure you know I I, I mean win or lose uh my next fight I feel all the pressure in the world Do you think you kind of have to go out there and make a big statement just cuz obviously there's a bunch of big lobby fights so you got the title on your card then you have Poirier Connor where you already know if Connor wins that fight he's getting the title shot yeah, it's weird. I, I win this next fight and not even be close to a title shot. That's the crazy part. I can have a safe fight and I can do all the right things in the fight and win the fight. And I won't even be... Okay, let's say I won't be even the second contender. I, like yeah. I, I could, I could not even be after Connor or Dustin. There's, uh, there's Justin Gagey. There's so many people that that are uh, capable of just jumping in on that. So it's, um, it's an interesting division. But I, I just think to myself, you know, I watched Max Holloway get like a ten fight win streak before he got the title. So I'm, just, I'm just not gonna complain. I'm just gonna just continue to do what I've been doing. Well, that was kind of part of my next question is like, do you even really care where this win puts you? Because you might need at least another win anyways. Well, I, I, I do because if it was, if, if it wasn't, if I get this win, I'm assuming I'm going to be top five. Yeah. If it wasn't for this fight, I would be okay. Maybe number eight instead of number, you know, <laughs> number five. So I, I, uh, uh, number five. So I do care where it, it puts me. It puts me in a very good position. So, uh, but it would, it would it would suck to imagine to fight let's say uh, Dan Hooker and I'm not saying Dan Hooker is not a good fighter but it it wouldn't I don't know if it would bring me any closer to the title. Oh, for someone like you who's been just grinding through the division like other people like what do you make of Chandler coming in here and just getting that immediate title shot? Obviously he has the resume from Bellator but then he only did one fight in the UFC. Yeah, that that was the thing that was a little bit difficult. Because he only had one fight. I mean, if he had one more fight and he was impressive in that fight, okay. And and it wasn't like Dan Hooker was coming off a, of a 10-fight win streak. He was coming off of a loss. So it, it was a little difficult to watch. But at the same time, it's like, I get it. He he's He's got an opportunity. He's making the most of it. So nothing against him. God bless the guy. But... Uh, I, I thought um, I thought Justin Gagey, if, if anybody deserved that title shot, it would be Justin Gagey, and, and uh, you can do Charles, since Dustin wants to fight um, Connor again. Obviously, fans are back, too. Like, what's that going to be like for you? Sold out crowd in Houston. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I, I've been enjoying the quiet, but at the same time, um, you know, my, my last knockout, no, no, it wasn't my last knockout, but my uh, the 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 comeback fight of the year was the close, two forty eight. That was that was the last time there was crowds, and so imagine that, you know, Tony I think does well with crowds as well. So we'll see how it goes. I I, I think it it's shaping up to be, uh, to be a really interesting fight. Obviously, I asked you before about the pressure on Tony, but I was thinking about it. I actually think there like there is a lot of pressure on you just because you've seen the division like. This is a big step up for you to get one of these top 10 guys. And you've already seen how hard it is to get them to agree to fight down. Dude, it's it's such a pain in the butt. Like, it, to get a top five guy is like winning the lot, a lottery right now. You get, Well, winning a lot, lottery is just luck. I, this this involves a lot more than that. So it's it's really difficult. You, you got to beat a lot of good guys and, and then the timing has to be right and they can't have an opponent and they can't be in a position where they got a lot of uh, – uh, they got good cards in their hands, which means they're in a good position where they can say no. So it's uh, – there's a lot to it, man, and, and I'm just – I'm pretty happy about this fight and, and I do feel pressure, but I feel pressure all the time. I think pressure is a God-given gift that helps us, uh, helps us uh, just be better.
Are you rooting for Oliver to win on that card just because you guys are supposed to fight? And I think you fighting for the belt would obviously be a much bigger fight. Honestly, I'm not rooting for either one guy. I, uh, I mean, I get it. Oliver has been in the UFC for a long time, so I, he deserves he deserves a chance at the title, and and you know, hopefully he wins. But I, I don't. In my division, I try not to be a fan of anybody, just because one day we might fight. So I I, I try not to to worry about it. Whoever gets it gets it. I just wanna I just wanna continue to do my job and look for the next person. Is Gaethje about the only one? In the top five, you wouldn't fight, or is Gage, you even if it you had to fight, you'd fight him? The only guy in, in the lightweight division I would not fight is Rafael Dos Anjos. He's, he's family to me. The thing with Justin is Justin is a very good friend, and I would prefer... You know you know how Darren Till always jokes about uh, Yolo Romero? Yeah. I, I have that common... I have that feeling with Justin. When I train with Justin, you got to understand, man, his power is unreal. I, I'm gonna avoid that fight as long as I can, and uh, but I, who knows? Eventually, it's probably gonna happen. Has it been like good for you? Obviously, after you got knocked out by Hernandez, everyone was kind of questioning your chin. Like, is that something that you kind of like? What kind of change for you? Obviously, you had that surgery, but it's like, is it fundamentally the change because like you were taking these big shots that that the Hernandez one knocked out that probably wouldn't knock you out right now. So I'm I'm telling you, uh, there was actually no surgery. We skipped the surgery. Or the, the re, you, it was the neck injury, though. Yeah. So I was questioning my chin. I, don't get me wrong. I was questioning my chin. I was having issues in 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 training. Uh, my arm would go numb all the time, and and it was one of those things where I just was like, you know what? I'm uh, I'm just gonna I gotta get. This is one of those things you gotta figure out. And and once I did go to see all the doctors and the specialists and. They're like, hey, this is the problem. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna try to fix this. If it works out, I'm not gonna retire. But if it doesn't work out, I'm not. I'm not fighting without a chin. That's impossible, especially uh, with my style. So, so it it was, uh, man, it was a big confidence builder. Once I went into the doctors and they looked at me and they just they they checked me out and they're like, dude, you got a lot of work to do. And there's the easy way where you can get a surgery. Uh, but who knows how it's going to come out or you can do years of rehab and we're doing the years of rehab right now. Uh, obviously Ferguson, one of the best lightweights like of all time, like what do you think a win over him would do for your kind of legacy and your resume? I'm not a big legacy guy. Yep. It might may sound weird, but I'm, I'm not a big legacy guy. Um, but just to be able to fight one of the best lightweights of all time, I think it's it's an incredible opportunity and I, I take joy in it and I look forward to it. It's it's weird because he is a scary dude, but every time I think about the fight, I get pretty happy. So if that's not weird, I don't I don't know what weird is, you know. So I'm 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 really looking forward to it. I'm I'm looking forward to just taking what has got oh taking what God has given me and, and just presenting it to everyone. Do you think Tony is going to shoot on you? Because I don't think he actually will. Because I think you're probably much better on the ground. Shoot, I, I never even thought about that. Uh, he might actually. Now that you mention it, I think I saw him do some shots on Edson Barboso when I watched their fight. So, dude, he might. Good, uh, good insight. Thanks, bud. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, lightweight division. Like we talked about, a lot of key fights. Like you, you get the win here. Like, is there someone you have your eye on, or do you just have to kind of wait to see these fights play out? Mm, ideally, whoever wins the belt. If not, maybe the loser of the of that. I can get the loser of that, and then eventually go from there. But man, I'm 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 having a baby in June, and I I told the UFC like after that, I, like you guys don't call me for a while. I I don't care what fight it is. I'm 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 taking a little break. I'll probably come back in in December or something. So in in like. The baby's kind of coming at the perfect time then. So, because all these big fights will play out, the division should be wide open by the time you're looking to return. 
Exactly. And, and they called me for June and I, I said, no, I can't do it. I said, I have to do it. You guys have to do it earlier. And I, I'm assuming most fighters don't do that. Most fighters say, no, 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 we, I, I want it later. So I, I think, I don't know how they felt about that, but I'm, I'm, they may have thought it was kind of difficult. Like, you know, we're giving you a fight at the right time and you're saying no. So um, I, I hope the division opens up in, uh, by then, but I'm, I'm not really worried about it. I'm, I'm just hoping to spend some time with my daughter. Obviously, Connor does big business for anyone, but as a fighter in the light division, like, do you kind of hope he doesn't get his hands on that belt again? Because we obviously saw what happened when he was a champion, not defending, just kind of calling for all these big fights. Yeah. I don't like the fact that he doesn't defend the belt. Yeah, that's that's a little frustrating. And it's not an easy division. I, I don't know if he has the ability right now. I don't know if he has the ability. I don't know if he has, he's willing to make the sacrifices uh, to be a champion. So I would prefer if he does become champion, stays active. And if not, yeah, man, maybe, maybe continue to do your big fights and just focus on those. Well, Benil, you will have a big fan and one of my friends from Iran too. Like he literally doesn't watch UFC except when you're fighting. I have to text him all the time with whatever day you're fighting, but I appreciate you doing this, man. Yeah, of course. Tell him I said, what's up? Yeah. Thank you. Take care, bro. All right. We're joined by UFC middleweight Edmund Shabazi and who is finally coming back here. Edmund, how's it going? Good, man. Good. How you doing? I'm doing well. Obviously coming back here before we get into it, I just want to get into your last fight. I see a lot of stuff going into that Brunson fight, you become the main event, like your first UFC main event. Like what was that fight like for you? Obviously it was a, your first career loss. Like what's kind of been, what, like, what do you take away from that fight? Oh, a lot, you know, uh, it was my first, of course it was my first career loss and I use it as a big time learning lesson. You know, um, I was kind of going in there to hunt for the finish and look to finish right away, you know, and kind of gas myself out like that. Uh, Cause I was looking for one shot to put him out, but you know, um uh his experience experience you know he's an experienced guy too he weathered the storm and uh stayed calm in there and then eventually uh went in his favor but um as far as learning from that fight i learned a lot you know from uh, about myself and you know some things i needed to change up in training and it's, it's been going really good now you know i feel great and i just can't wait to fight on may 15 now Oh, obviously you never want to lose, but are you kind of glad it happened right now? Like so early on in your UFC career? Cause obviously you, you can learn a lot from that. You can, you're still ranked. Like you can still kind of make your way up the ranks and get to an eventual title shot. Yeah. You know, um, uh, everybody loses at some point and, um, I'm happy, you know, uh, this happened, uh, and I took it as a big time learning lesson, you know, and I, I wasn't so down from this loss or anything like that. You know, I, I use it to, motivate me to come back better and work on myself what's been the last couple months been like so you haven't done much media yet it, you've it's kind of been radio sound like everyone was kind of waiting for you to say something or when your next fight would be yeah you know i i've just been in the gym training man i've, I've been just putting in work silently <laughs> and and just grinding daily you know uh, uh waiting to get a fight and this opportunity came up so um i'm like let's do it and then i found out it's it's the houston thing so even better you know so yeah uh, then like was this the first fight that came up for you or like was because i'm surprised it kind of took this long for them to book you in another fight yeah um well at first uh i got a, a few months off uh, to like yep. to train a little bit you know improve on my skills and uh just work 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 and um and then yeah there was a few uh there was like a couple fights offered that actually that weren't kind of making the best sense but um eventually like we kind of wanted this fight too you know uh and it it, it all fell into place you know we got the call and they were like hell yeah let's do it you know and then Jack Hermanson, like, this is a guy that was, if he beat Jared Cannonier, he was going to get a title shot. Like, he's been a top 10 middleweight for quite some time. Like, so when you get that name on the other side of the contract, like, what, what kind of goes through your head? I'm excited. Uh, it's, it's motivating for me, you know, and uh, it's a, it's another chance for me to uh, break into that, you know, like, top, top of the division. So 
beating this guy will definitely put me up there and yeah you know uh yeah uh i, I wanted this fight so uh i'm i'm happy it happened and i, I can't wait i'm not sure how much of you've seen it because i i think i i think you've been staying off social media quite a bit like and when this fight was booked, a lot of people were, didn't really get it because they thought they were rushing you too much. They thought that's what happened with the Brunson fight. And then you're getting a, a rank guy above you and Jack. Like, do you feel that is the case? Like, they're really trying to push you, or do you think this is the right next step? No, you know, um, uh, the way I look at it is I'm in the UFC. I got to fight the best. You know, you're going to fight the best at all times at, at some point. So uh, I want to take all, all the good fights, you know, if it's hard, if it's not, you know, I want to just go out there and perform and um, be the best. So to be the best, you got to be the best. Yeah, I came off a loss, but um, I learned a lot already from that loss. So, uh, and I, I think stylistically, this is a great matchup for me too. And like, I, I know you obviously did get finished by Brunson, but that first round, like you were in it. And like, like you just said earlier, like you just kind of gassed yourself out. Like yeah. that first round was competitive. You probably won that first round. Yeah, you know, uh, I was I was looking for, I was looking to just put him away, you know, in my mind. I'm like, I got to put this guy away. I got to put this guy away. And um, it wasn't happening. So, like, I would say by, like, mid-second round is whenever I, I like, really gassed out. And um, people think uh, – the thing is, people think I was completely out in that fight. I wasn't out. My, it looks like I'm – I swear, it looks like mm -hmm. I'm out. But I, I was consciously in there. Like, after the fight, we – went to the doctors i'm reciting everything i'm like i'm just exhausted you know like uh i remember everything i was describing everything that happened in the fight you know i remember specific every moment in the fight but uh it's just like when you get that adrenaline dump too and, and you, it's like something that you need like at least like 20 to 30 minutes to recover from you know <clears throat> entering this fight like do you have a bit of a chip on your shoulder just to remind everyone how good you are after that loss uh, yeah, I mean, you could look at it that way, but I I'm just motivated to come back on the win column and, and get a win again, you know. Uh, uh, I've been training hard, working really hard, and I I'm excited to go out and perform. Well, obviously, Jack Manson, like you look at his career, obviously he's one and two in his last three, but lost a decision to Vittori, submitted Gasol in like a minute, and then got knocked out by Cannoneer. Like, what do you kind of make of his recent run? Because he does get rocked and fights a lot, but when it gets down to the ground, like he can finish you in just like a split second. That's all he needs. Yeah, I know. I know. He he he's a he's a tough fighter. He, he's tough. He takes the shots, and we'll keep we'll keep uh, the fight going and. Uh, doesn't give up so and his ground game of course he has, he has a, a slick ground game but i've been working a lot with uh edwin najmi and home liberal on my ground game a lot and uh, it's been it's been uh, improving a lot tremendously and um you know I'll, I'll be ready for anything obviously you don't want to give away too much but I assume to say the game plan is keep this fight on the feet for as long as possible uh we'll see we'll see <laughs> How do you really see this fight playing out? Because you, obviously we've seen Jack get knocked out before and yeah. we've seen you, like you have a ton of knock power. Like you were a guy that finished Brad Tavares and not many people finished Brad Tavares. And like entering that fight, everyone was praising Tavares' durability and what would happen if Shabazz and can't get him out. Yeah, um, I, I'm I'm just going to be ready for the full full fight, uh, full, full, full rounds if it goes, you know, I'll be ready for anything. The finish comes, I'm, I'm going to take it. You know, I'm, I'm yeah, everybody knows I'm a finisher, so... Uh, just I, i'm gonna put on a performance is that something you learned from the last fight is you're not trying to force anything like you're not going to be going after this finish it's more about being patient and picking your shots yeah you know like not rushing to put him away with one shot you know oh this one shot's gonna put him out put him out put him out you know uh if the opportunity opportunity presents itself i'll take it you know I, i'm not gonna rush for the finish but um if i see i've heard him and stuff like that and the finish is there i, I take the, i take finishes usually what do you think a win over Jack does for you? Because he's obviously in the top ten. Like I think a win here could get you one of those top five guys. Yeah, you know that that's what I want. Uh, with the win over Jack Hermanson, uh, I'll be looking to fight one of the top five or top six guys and um, keep climbing to be the best. I, I know Till and Costa without fights. I actually think those would be really entertaining fights, and that you get another shot at a main event with those two. Oh yeah, guaranteed. Uh, just a few more things is obviously. <laughs> 
a lot of people after you lost to were saying, oh, Edmund needs a camp change. It was the same exact thing after Ronda lost. Like, do you pay any attention to that? Or like, what do you make of all that? Because it seems like whenever someone loses, all the fans are quick to saying like, oh, they need a camp change. Like same thing happened with Connor after he lost to Dustin. No, yeah, no. I mean, that's just the, you know, the MMA fans there. They just like switch up on you with a winner or loss, you know. Uh, but we did make, uh, in my camp, uh, everything's... Uh, the same, but we made a lot of adjustments to, uh, to specific trainings and grappling, wrestling trainings. Like we've trying to like made a lot of switches on that part, and uh, really been pushing on that on those two to to be prepared. And they're throwing you on this massive pay per view card. Like this main card, I think it's gonna be one of the best. Like you have the lightweight title fight, you have Diaz Edwards, you have your fight, you have uh, Barboza, uh, Shane Burgos. Like there's a lot of really good fights. Like what's it like to be on this card and to be back in front of a sold out crowd? And it's awesome. Uh, uh, I just can't wait to go out there in front of a crowd and perform. The energy is electric always when there's a lot of fans. And man. Uh, you know, yeah, I get goosebumps thinking about it, you know, to go out in front of fans, finally. You know, last fight, it was in no fans, you know, but finally fans are back and it's going to be fun. Well, obviously no excuse, but do you think that played a factor in the last fight? Because uh, it seems like a lot of more people were having these big energy jumps with no fans to kind of pick them up. Because when you get tired, like the fans start cheering you on, it kind of gives you that second uh, boost of energy. Uh, no, no, no excuses. You know, I lost my last fight fair and square. <clears throat> fans or no fans uh i guess myself out and that's pretty much it uh no excuses did uh ronda talk to you after the loss or did, i've you talked to her? her after yeah yeah, yeah. i've had some what, 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 what did she say because obviously she went through that first career loss as well and just some encouragement you know encouragement after the fights to keep going forward and like you know how, how it is like encouraging talks where do you kind of see yourself at the end of this year in the middleweight division? Obviously, Adesanya is without a dance partner right now. Like, the, there's a lot of key middleweight fights that's happened already. Like, it, it seems like this division is really starting to get moving again. Yeah, you know, the division is really, really hot right now. A lot of good fights going on. And um, with the win over Jack, I think it opens me up to a lot of great matchups as well. You know, my matchup right now is a great matchup. And then with the win over him, it will open up even great, greater matchups. It's a lot of talent in the division, so I'm excited. Uh, last thing is, your brother hasn't fought in quite some time. Like, wh when's he gonna get back in there? He'll be back. He'll be back. Um, uh, the California shows are opening up soon, so he'll be back. I'd say um, late June or early July. He'll be back. Is that a goal for you guys? Is to be on a UFC card together? Absolutely. All right. Well, admin man, that's all I got for you. Thanks so much for doing this. I appreciate that's it. Sure. All right, we're joined by UFC featherweight Edson Barboza, who's back in action against Shane Burgos at UFC 262. Edson, how's it going, man? Very good, very good, man. Thank you for for opportunity to talk to you guys. Yeah, obviously, last time we talked was um, after your last fight. You kind of were mentioning you had one fight left on your deal. You didn't really know what you were going to do. Like, maybe you asked the UFC for your release. Maybe you re-sign. You end up re-signing. Like, can you kind of take me through that negotiation? Like, how did that all get together where you ended up deciding to re-sign at the UFC? Yeah, I sit down with my family, my manager. Um, I talk a lot, you know, I talk a lot with my manager. He, come on, UFC is still the best show, you know, and he's offering us a good deal for us. I think good deal for me, a good deal for UFC. And I was very happy, you know. My goal is staying in UFC, doing a good job. And thank God he resigned the contract. Um, I'm very happy with the new contract. Uh, this gives me a lot of motivate. You know, I feel more motivated than ever because I know right now we have to really enjoy my job, really enjoy you know my my work, my hard work, and I want to show for UFC. I really deserve every every sense in the cage. Uh, was May the time frame you wanted to return, or were you hoping to return a bit sooner? Sorry? Was May when you wanted to return, or were you hoping to return a bit sooner after your last fight? Oh, I really want, I want, I really want to return, for sure, you know? 
uh, man, I worked for UFC for a long time, you know. I worked for UFC for more than 10 years. Uh, I'm happy in that. Hey, Shane Burgos, was this a guy you wanted or is it just who the UFC offered? Uh, he's a top guy, you know. He's a top 15. He's one of the best. I, I really I really want to, to f- test myself against the best guys in the world. He's one of the best. And UFC offered me to fight him. I say, of course, he's one of the best. Uh, I'm very happy to always prove myself against the best guys in UFC. Your last fight, like how big was that for your just confidence, getting that win officially? Because your past two fights with Ige and Felder, like those easily could have gone your way too. Uh, that fight's very important for me, because especially because change the opponents in two weeks i need like a complete different uh, game plan because i was fighting uh so deep he's a orthodox striker in two weeks uh, give me south call wrestler you know i need to figure it out and you know, figure it out in a couple of days and you know, show you guys a really good job and yeah, feeling great i did the first fight i guess he I was a little bit scared about the cutting weight how I want to feel. In the second fight, I know I can do it. I know I can feel good. And, and it's making me very, very excited for the next one because I know I want to feel much, much better for the next one. Obviously, Shane's only lost to two guys in Josh Emmett and Calvin Cater. Like, where do you kind of rank him as, like, where do you kind of rank him as one of your toughest opponents that you fought? Because he is a very well-rounded guy, but you've you've been in there with some of the best. Yeah, like I said, man, he, he's one of the best. He's a top guy, he's top 15. He just lost for two tough guys, two top 10. And very excited, very excited because I was in UFC for a long time. I always test myself to get the best. UFC gives me the chance to fight against the best. I'm so, so thankful. Obviously, but I think everyone kind of knows the how this fight's going to play out is just two strikers going at it. Is that kind of how you view it? Is just going to be a kickboxing fight? No, that's MMA fight. You know, uh, you need to be ready for everything. You know, I'm ready for everything. I'm ready to play in the ground. I'm ready to do my wrestling. I'm ready to, to, to stay in the fit. One thing I know, wherever this fight's going, I'm ready. I'm more than ready. I feel great. You know, the camp's doing well. I'm healthy. And but it's gonna be a great match. He's a great striker. It's definitely everybody knows I'm striker. I'm on the best in this business, and yeah, it's gonna be a fun fight. I, I saw an interview Shane did, and he actually said he expects you to shoot on him pretty often. Like I actually thought it'd be the other way around. I thought if someone's gonna wrestle, it's gonna be him. Man, I thought I get the best strikers in UFC. You know, I thought. Patties, he tried to take me down. I fought. Uh, most guys I fought tried to take me down. I fought uh, Cerrone, he tried to take me down. Everybody tried to take me down, you know? All, all, everybody in 24 fighting UFC. But why not? Why not? It's an MMA fight, you know? I hope he's ready for everything. Ready for, 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 I'm shooting, ready for the ground game, ready to strike. It's not a kickboxing match, you know? I hope he's ready for everything. Uh, your leg kicks are obviously a big part of your game. Like, how important do you think that's going to be in this fight? Because Shane's a guy that likes to use his footwork quite often. If you can kind of damage that leg, it's going to limit how much he can move around. Uh, I, I think my leg kicks very important for, for for all my fights, you know. And it's funny because everybody knows I want to throw some legs, some hard leg kicks, and I got everybody with this. Uh, yeah, it's part of my game, you know. Everybody knows I have, like I said, I have 24 fights in UFC. Everybody knows my game, you know, the strong part of my game. And, and it still work. I was still there. I still work every single fight. Like I said, I hope he's ready for this. When people are so, like, as obviously Shane's going to be expecting those leg kicks. Like, do you think that kind of gives you an opportunity to go up high and kind of catch them when they're not expecting it? Because they're expecting you to go low to the body all the time. It's a fight, you know, it's a feeling. That's about the feeling, you know. And it's hard to say, oh, I want to work this, I want to work there. Uh, 
I think the most important for, for me, it's my, my, my game plan with my coach, it's fuel the fight. If he gives me a chance to do some leg kicks on the throw, if he gives me a chance to throw high, if he gives me a chance to take him down, it's an MMA fight. Uh, and the most important to go there, have a fun. That's what I was learning last couple of camps uh, because, yeah, one day it's going to be over. You know, I need to enjoy, I need to have a fun every single time. And it's a lot of different in my, 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 make different in my game right now. You guys are going to see it best at some Barbosa. How, how do you see this fight playing out? Because Shane's a durable guy and he's a hard guy to put away, but you obviously have a lot of knockout power. Oh, it's going to be a war, like always. Every time I fall, every time I'm fighting, you guys will see a war, and this fight's going to be different. It's going to be a war. That's what I'm waiting for. Do you kind of think this is a front runner for fight of the night on this card? Yeah, it, this is awesome, you know, because... Every, no, I, my, the 99% of the time I was fighting, the people keep asking me, oh, this is going to be a fight of the night. Everybody expect a lot of, you know, a lot of damage in, in my fights. And I guess, I think I have a nine bonus, you know, eight or seven fight of the night. And yeah, why not? Like I said, I'm ready for war. I'm going to be there. I'm going to give my best. I hope you're ready for that. Obviously, you're from a great camp, an American top team. Like, who are some of the people you're working with for this camp? And the American top team have 1,000 different guys, you know, 1,000 really good high level and everything. The best strikers, best wrestler, the best guys in the ground. Um, I feel so blessed to work with the American top team. And man, I train with so many guys, they try every single sparring change. You know, because if you're sparring the same guy all the time, you figure it out. I, I'm figuring out super very fast. You know, my my my, my opponents. It's, if you do something with me one time, it's so hard to do this again. And I try change every single, oh, every single spar change opponents, but I train with the best. Obviously, fans are back for your fight. How excited are you to be back in front of a sold out crowd? Man, I'm very excited, very excited, especially for us. And I'm striking, you know. I love to to hit the guys, he, he feel the whole crowd like, oh, this is so awesome. Very excited. I can't wait. It's gonna be a great night for sure. Uh, Shane's ranked ninth in the division. So, what do you think a win over him, and especially if you finish him, what do you, what do you think that does for you? Step closer to the title shot. I feel I dropped from 145. I feel I'm more motivated than ever. I feel better than ever, like uh, everywhere and striking and ground and my wrestling. And my goal is to be featherweight champ. I know I have everything to be a champ and I want to keep on work for that. Do you have anyone in mind of who you'd want next? There are obviously some key featherweight fights coming up. And I think maybe that Ige Korean zombie winner makes a lot of sense just because that Ige fight was super close. Maybe run that back. Or there's like Zabit's there, Yair Rodriguez. Like there's so many uh, fun fights and tons of options for you. You said I have so many guys, you know, in front of me in the ranking. I fought everybody. Whatever you have to see, ask me to fight, I'm in. You know, all those guys, top five, top 15. But I have one guy in mind. I want to weigh. I want to this next fights pass, I want to ask for fight this guy. Are you hoping a top five guy is next though, or, or soon, like in within your next two fights? Sorry? Are you hoping a top five guy, like you can make that run up real quick? Of course. I hope you have to give me a top guy, you know, close to the 30 shots possible. Uh, like I said, man, I'm, I'm a long way in the UFC. I, I, I fight for UFC for, for 10 years and I really deserve, you know. I want to prove for UFC, I want to prove for everybody, I really deserve to get my chance for the title shot. Uh, just a few more things is, when do you think, like realistic time frame, like when is that featherweight title shot in your mind? Like how many more fights? I think it's this one and maybe one or two more and you're right there. Maybe one, two more. That's it. Maybe two more. I'm very realistic, you know, I'm not, but I really believe it. I won this next one, two more fights, I was very close to my chance. To the title shot. 
what do you think that does for your legacy if you become the featherweight champ? Because obviously, you'd be the UFC champion. You've beaten a lot of the top guys at lightweight. Like you've beaten most of the best guys in the UFC. Yeah, my legacy gonna be forever. It's funny because in couple this year and last year, I saw the people come to me. The young kids come to me and say, "Hey, you are legend." I was like, "Think about it. Come on, man. I'm getting older." When people start talking to you, you say you're a legend because you get older. But I think my legs gonna be there, man. Uh, or ever talk about striking, talk about the best guys in, in UFC, you know, the best knockouts, the best highlights, guys talking about me, you know. I think my legs is gonna stay forever. And the guy really try to uh, be a champ every single fight. I know I always give my best, I always give my. Hundred percent. I think that's the most important. That's my legacy. Everything goes your way here. Like, how quickly would you want to turn this thing around? Because I assume you probably want to be pretty active this year. Yeah, man. I hope. Like, I love my job. I was healthy. I think that's the most important. Uh, I hope best this fighter will stay healthy. And I really want to fight. You know, maybe July, August. I'd be ready for that. You know, I want to stay busy this year. I hope to do three fights this year. And, yeah, I hope to do three fights this year. You, you've obviously made the cut to featherweight twice now. Like, do you honestly think you were a featherweight your entire career? I don't know. But I feel good. This, I think, right now, you know. I was, I feel right now much much better with my last two fights in featherweight because i know i i know my body right now better you know i understand my body my body understand how what i need to do to cut eat the right things doing the right you know the right trainings but hey i mean in in, in lightweight for 10 years and did a really good job you know i think i changed because i feel i need something different to motivate me and drop for 145 give me this bump and like i said i'm more motivated than ever uh just two more things is you're obviously feeling really good you're 35 like how much longer do you think you still got because i still think you, there's still a couple good more years left in you yeah I, I, I talked to my friend a couple of days ago he said i feel great it's funny because i'm so scared to get older he said, oh, when i get older i can't train i can't it's just, I do complete opposite. I feel more strong, get stronger. I feel faster. I feel my cardio getting better because I feel I'm getting older. I learn about my body. You know, when I was young, I trained like a three times a day. I do 16, 17 train a week. And that's crazy. That's too much. I always fight. Always. I think 99% of my fighting I've seen, I hurt something before the fight, you know. But right now, I feel again more, it's more to learn about my body. Sometimes I need, like, a, okay, I want to take off a little bit, rest a little bit, and I feel better than ever. I, I really believe I have a long, long way in my career. And just last thing, do you ever think you're going to go back up to lightweight or do you think it's featherweight from here on out? Like, if the right opportunity came up, like, would you take a lightweight fight? I'm a fighter, you know. Uh, like I said, my goal would be a featherweight champ for sure. But like I said, I'm a fighter. If you have seen offer me a good fight in light away, why not? You know, I, I always ready. Maybe the trilogy with Felder. That's got to get settled. Why not? Yes, why not? That's the fight making me, you know, excited. You know, the the, the the third fight against him. You know, why not? I'm always ready. All right, well, Edson, I appreciate the time. Thank you, much. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Bye. All right, we're joined by UFC middleweight Jack Hermanson, who's back at UFC 262. Jack, how's it going? It's going well, my man. I'm uh, here in Texas right now, uh, enjoying the final preparations uh, for my fight. So uh, all good here. Yeah, obviously fans are back back and for texas like what's all that kind of like your fight and they, like we're what 10 11 days out we're doing this interview and fans are back for your fight soon i'm looking forward to it it's gonna be super cool uh 
I'm very, very excited about it, actually. You know, it's almost like it feels weird, you know. Oh, man, it's going to be all of those people, you know, because, uh, yeah, you're not uh, used to crowded uh, areas right now. So <laughs> looking forward to that. It's going to be really, really awesome. Uh, before we get into this one, I just want to quickly touch on your last fight. Obviously, a lot of things didn't go your way in that fight. Just with even from before that fight, like you were supposed to fight Till, he gets out. You're supposed to fight Hall, and that doesn't happen. You then yeah. end up fighting Vittori, and you lose that fight. Like, what kind of like what do you take away from that fight? Because Vittori is a guy that you probably need more than a week to train for. Yeah, the thing is that uh, I felt pretty good coming into that fight. But in the first round, you know, um, uh, you know, usually, uh, you know, uh, there is a few injuries in, in in every fight. You know, I I broke my toe and so on in this one. But the main thing is that in the first round, uh, when he connects with a punch, he he actually breaks my orbital bone, and uh, I have a hard time to to see because uh, it affected my vision. So it was not that the eye was swollen or anything like that, but the eye moved in the eye socket and uh, I had like kind of a really, really weird uh, vision for the whole fight. So it was really, really hard to, uh, yeah, to even, you know, stay, stay in the fight. Uh, so, um, and that injury came in the first round. So it, it was tough. Uh, the only thing I can take from that fight is that, uh, don't get hit, you know, <laughs> and that's something that you're always trying to do. And sometimes you can get hit a uh, hundred times and nothing like that happens. And like this time, uh, it happened with the first punch he connected with. So, yeah, that's a part of the game, you know, and uh, I think that affected uh, the fight a lot. Uh, was this the, about the time frame you were looking for, uh, middle of May? Uh, yeah, I, I think this was uh, the the perfect time frame actually to f for my return. Uh, it took some some time to to heal my injuries, and uh, uh, I think this is the perfect time actually. Uh, it it wouldn't been good to 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 be fighting any any sooner than this. So uh, I, I'm happy with the time frame. Edmund Shabazian, are you surprised this is who they gave you? Because I thought. They would have tried to build him back up, and you're a tough fight for anyone. Yeah, um, I don't know, man. It's uh, in the middle of it right now. Uh, there's so many people that has been already fighting each other, and uh, uh, it's hard, you know, uh, because it doesn't seem like the guys uh, from under managed to fight their way into. Each other so uh yeah i think i, I wasn't surprised that they have been uh, speaking about this matchup before so uh yeah and i kind of like i, I think i almost asked for the fight because I, I wanted a fight and they were just like yeah this is who is available right now and i said like okay let's go let's go with edmund uh Entering that Brunton fight, he was on a big roll, knocking everyone out. Like he knocked out Brad Tavares in the first round, who doesn't really get knocked out. And then Brunson kind of derailed a lot using his grappling. Like, what do you make of Shabazzin's last fight and his performance? Yeah, Nicole. Uh, I didn't even need to take a punt. <laughs> Which was his last performance? <laughs> uh, the, the Brunton loss. It was. Uh, yeah, it was Brunson, of course. Yeah, you know, I think it showed what uh, kind of weaknesses he has, you know, and uh, um, I believe that uh, if Brunson can do that to him, I should be able to do that to him as well, you know. Uh, I think that uh, there is uh, not a person in of you than me, so I believe that, uh, uh, yeah, I'm a bad matchup for him. That, that's what I'm taking from uh, from his performance. Is the game plan just to get this fight down to the ground? Yeah, uh, of course. I, I always want. Uh, I know that my opponents uh, they prefer for that, so I need to be able to fight him in the stand up as well. So I do have a plan for him uh, there as well. And if I get a good opportunity, of course, I'm going to be trying to take him down. But uh, 
Uh, I'm uh, prepared to fight in the in the stand up as well. Do you think you can submit them or finish them on the ground? I know I can. I know there's there's not a man uh, in the world that I can't finish on the ground. You know, I I think that uh, you know, so so far it's about Jacare has been the only person uh, in the UFC that ha has been surviving my. My, my game, you know, if I get people to the ground, it's usually over. And uh, I think it's going to be the same with, uh, with that one. What do you think a win, especially a stoppage win, does for you? I think it puts me, you know, in the, in the mix of uh, uh, getting uh, a bigger fight again. And, uh, you know, as I, as I mentioned before, there are so many people in the, in the middleweight that has already been fighting each other so i think the first person that get a couple of wins together uh, is in a really good spot for a title shot and that's what's in my mind so i'm hoping to uh, to advance with a bigger fight after this one maybe against some of the top guys whitaker holocausta uh, someone like that uh, that's actually my next question is is there a guy you want next because i thought maybe you redo that till fight because that fight always seems like a good one to make yeah but darren till <laughs> that's it doesn't seem like darren till managed to get in it you know he, he seems to injure himself all the time so <laughs> we'll see <laughs> we will see uh but if he's around why not? Hey, well, what, what what do you think the walkout is going to be like with fans back? Because you did obviously did that fight with no fans. I think the walkout is going to be amazing. It's going to be electric. And, uh, you know, the arena is going to shake. And I think the fans really lo are really looking forward to a big uh, MMA event like this. Uh, you know, the fans are hungry. I think I'm going to feed off it. Uh, everything goes your way here like how quickly would you want to turn this thing around oh uh if i get my hand raised and if i'm healthy uh let's do one in uh, august uh, uh, or something yeah august sounds good how many wins away do you think you are from a title shot because adesanya has beat on a lot of the top guys already and you would be a fresh matchup for him yeah, I think I'm close, man. If I do a really good win with this one, and then if I get a big name and, and, and beat him, I'm right up there again. All right, well, Jack, man, I appreciate the time. Thanks for doing this. Thank you so much, Cole. I'm sorry for that connection. Uh, this time wasn't the best. So yeah, no, sorry about the, that. The bad, the bad Texas Wi-Fi. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jack. Thank you. Okay, have a good one, Cole.